Good morning and welcome to the broadcast everybody. Today we are going to take Orville the F750 dump truck. Where's the Mac? Stick around and I'll tell you all about it. So where is the big Mac? Willard, what happened to him? Not much really. <laughs> uh, well, where to begin here? Okay, and buying this used truck obviously i knew there would be a couple of times in and out of the shop it was the same way with wilbur the 1985 l9000 what we've gathered when uh before i bought the truck obviously the engine looked way too clean the whole truck looked super clean so it's hard to see any little seeps and stuff like that exhaust leaks the first time in the shop they did find a, cra a broken uh, exhaust manifold stud that holds the exhaust manifold onto the engine. It was broke off and it, there wasn't soot around it yet and it can take a while for those to really start leaking. So we held off on that. It does have a new steering box, but since I've had it, it leaked out all of the power steering fluid. The, my mechanic added to it and it leaked it back out again. So this past weekend I crawled under there and even though I don't like doing this kind of stuff, it's just not my thing. I tightened every thing that was attached to it and a lot of the hose clamps were loose and you guys saw in the last video or maybe video before last that I lost a nut off one of the axle hubs. And a lot of people thought, you know, that it was my mechanic that did that. And even though they replaced a lot of the suspension components, it wasn't on my mechanic. I think what happened is these guys that were gonna sell this truck, they went through just like anybody and cleaned it up and they fixed things that were just a real issue, like the steering box. And I bet they thought that that was what was causing the steering to be stiff. I thought it was because it leaked out all the fluid initially, but we put fluid in it twice, got everything tightened up, and then yesterday it was just super, super tight. It's almost like, in comparison to any other truck I'd had, it was only it only had like 20% power steering. It's almost like when I tried to turn it really fast, it was working against me. Therefore, I took it back to the shop and we jacked the front end up and it was still stiff even with weight off the front end so we think that the power steering pump has gone kaput so i just went ahead and put it into the shop and we're going to do that i'm going to go ahead and have them fix that broken stud i was kind of excited about driving this little truck again just for the ease of it but i'm already remembering why i don't really particularly like this truck Every single bump in the road jars your guts out. It's all right though. We were fortunate to have two trucks. So I can just keep the wheels rolling. I can keep the money rolling in. And we can get the Mac even closer up to par. I've got them pricing out a couple of fender flares for the front. Because the front floats, they're 425s. They're huge. I mean, they're super wide. And I mean, it floats on top of the ground, even soft ground. Which helps keep one from spinning out as well. And you know what? It's okay, guys. It is okay. Me and Kelly were talking about it, and we both said the same thing. We went through the same thing with Wilbur, and we anticipated it. We have a savings set aside for this and we're gonna be able to put a little bit more into this truck. Drivetrain wise, he is awesome, absolutely awesome. And uh, one thing I did forget, my uh, mechanic Greg that did the trunnion replacement, he is, uh, he wanted me to bring it back after I hauled a few loads with it to check the, it's like a two piece nut that holds the trunnion on. And he wanted to just check, make sure, because the threads have gotten boogered up and he had to repair those. He just wants to make sure that that nut ain't trying to back off or anything. And maybe this, you know, maybe he finds something wrong and this is just our saving grace, you know. You just gotta 
feel like things happen for a reason and for the best and we just keep on going and as for right now i'm going to keep on going down here to the green river quarry pick up a load of road bond and we'll get started on this driveway project we will see you guys down there now that's what i like i just got off the phone with my man lee down at valley truck service he called yesterday to get quotes on the parts and my power steering pump should be there today so that's encouraging hopefully we won't have to do without that truck too too long i did order or i didn't order but i had them price me a new bumper on it the two fender pieces that goes in front of the battery boxes that are cracked and you talk about some expensive parts man the bumper for that thing i think was eighteen hundred dollars oh and fender flares they were like 300 a piece and then those pieces that go in front of the battery between the steer tires and the battery boxes which are the it's a mud guard i think they were like 600 dollars a piece <laughs> so expensive parts i'm gonna have to hold off on the cosmetic stuff but that that will be upcoming and it'll be a fun video to make for you guys putting all that stuff on if i ever have time to put it on may end up having them put it on i don't know anyway you guys uh stick around we'll get down here and see what we can do on this driveway now everybody we've gotten up to the job site let me show you what my plan is what we have is everything is fine to here you can see water's collecting there just kind of running across but this is kind of the issue this road is pretty well flat right now and you can see how water is coming down off this hillside and you can see all this sediment that's from water just sitting here on this road it's not really eroding one way i could handle this would be to cut a ditch line down through here but either way the whole road's going to have to slide over just a little bit because if i just cut a straight edge this hillside could start sloughing off and falling in so my plan is to just tailgate quite a bit of tonnage of road bond down on this road and i'm going to hug this side to raise this road bed up and this road will no longer be quite as flat it'll be dome shaped and this water's not running it's just kind of needing to trickle so i need to build up this section of road especially from here to right here for sure build it up probably about four to six more inches so this stops just sitting it'll want to run and you can see the result when you have straight off side you see how it's falling we don't want that my goal is to get the water to be able to trickle all the way to our culvert pipe here and that will solve the issue with the water standing on this road all we got to do now is tailgate a whole bunch of stone down on this road forgot my tripod today so you guys are just going to have to stick to the bed and ride along with me just another side note the idea is that i don't want road bond to drop right against the bank i want to have at least two to three inches is really all i need preferably five or so inches so when i finish grade this no matter what i do the box blade's going to want to spread material over and even if the road bond does come to this as long as the whole thing is dome shaped it's going to trickle down that edge let's get to it <laughs> Maybe you guys can see what I mean now. We've raised this road bed up, but because this material's damp, it didn't come out too smoothly. So it's got a couple of wig wags. So I'll be able to drop my tires with the tractor off this side and grade this. And it'll even that edge up, but it won't move material all the way over. Let's go get another load.
We just got back with another nine tones of road bond. Started Big Orange the tractor up, let him warm up a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna do this in a time-lapse fashion so you can actually see what's happening. I've really mounted this road bond up. Let me get off to one side so you can see the difference. So it's gonna be dome shaped. What I have to do is go ahead and then back blade these start points where it's higher and get this center portion nice and smooth. Then I can focus on running my tires of the tractor down the center portion and I can drop off this side that's an even shoulder. That way it keeps the plane that the box blade is on even and I can just ride straight down through here. And as long as I don't feel the tractor doing this number, I know that that box blade's cutting this level. And then I'll do the same thing to this side. I'll be able to drop my tires over here where this is graded out properly. Center will be graded properly. Then that box blade will cut this on grade. Allow me now to show you guys the difference. You can see that the edges of this part side of the driveway aren't perfect just yet. I ran out of material, but they are a lot straighter than they were when they were like this. Now, if that material was bone dry and I could have just tailgated at a consistent speed, I would have been able to tailgate and it have an even side. There comes the Lowe's man with his mulch delivery. <laughs> I better get out of the way. But now I'll mount you guys on the back side of the tractor and you guys can watch down the box blade as it picks up and deposits material to create an even side. Now I'm cutting this in the opposite direction because my box blade is tilted high on this side and low on this. But as you guys can see, since I'm keeping my tires down in that smooth side and in the center, the tractor's really not wobbling too much. 
side to side. So I'm going to go in first gear so you guys can see how this cuts. That fabric can be a pain. I'm going to get readjusted. I'm going to have to go a little bit on the other side a little bit more to get my angle just where I want it. Now once the tractor's cruising on the angle I want, now there's a blade on the back side that I'm using as kind of a gauge and I'm using that hydraulic top cylinder to kind of tilt this box up and down like that. If I need to start cutting more I'll tilt it forward and less I'll tilt it back. When I get to the ends of the new road bond, the tractor will level out. So I've got to go ahead and lift the blade up. Now you can tilt that blade way forward like that, and you can start back blading. And if your ground is super uneven, you've actually got a cut going backwards so that you can cut the highs and lows out. I know it's harder for you guys to get anything out of back blading, but and something else you'll notice is that see I picked that material up really fast. I'll turn to push it over that way. And this is a lot of stuff that you guys will just catch on to as you do this in practice. I can just tell you kind of the fundamentals of what I'm doing. I'll go a lot faster when I'm wanting to do the finish grade because that it makes it easier for me to see what's going on. And I don't really want to cut, I just want to smooth on this pass. Lift up as soon as your tractor starts to fall level with the uncut road. I've got my window open so I can hear how much that blade is cutting. And I can tell by the sound how aggressively it's rubbing that ground. And I've also got my float control for the tractor in the all the way up position so that the tractor's not pushing down on that box blade as hard. Now what I'll do is flip around and show you guys how I'm going to straighten out that edge over there. The faster you travel, number one, I find that it's easier to cut your grade, but it also slings material out to the outside of the box blade faster. Now I'll show you guys how fast I go when I'm wanting to really sling material out to the edges of my box blade. Again, I've got my draft control in the up position. Let's hit it again. Now notice I didn't change the tilt of the box blade because that first pass was just to get it lined up to where it just starts collecting material. You see it's starting to smooth them edges out. Now we are getting somewhere. Just 
totally going to use the back blade. See, it's barely collecting any material there in the middle. So that's pretty well cut. Let's go ahead and put some more material down here. You guys just comment below the word value. If you're getting value out of any of this, and if you feel like that you're understanding it and that it is giving you an idea of how to crown a road. That's the main thing about this video. I wanna teach you guys that. Now, I'm gonna get in Orville, and I'm gonna get a run at it. I'm gonna start way back there to get just a good little bit of speed up. That way, it will come out of the truck as smooth as possible. I'm gonna leave that tailgate open quite a bit so it doesn't clump up. This stuff is damp, but it's gonna pack so good. But as you can see, we've got this road pretty well crowned. There's a low spot right about there. So I may let out of the fuel just briefly to let it put a little bit of a thick layer there. But I'm gonna hug this side and we're just gonna try to stretch that load out the whole length if possible. Maybe even a little bit shorter to thicken this on up. We just saw that this stuff is actually starting to dry out pretty good. So either A, we're gonna have to go even faster on the future loads that we tailgate here or close our chains up a little bit. And that just depends on if this road was leaning and the truck was leaning, we'd wanna not go faster and just tighten that tailgate up to reduce the flow of the road bond. But it's coming out pretty nicely. What I'm going to do is take the tractor in this direction, grab this high spot and start pulling this material back toward that low area and just stretch it out toward that culvert. I'll do my best just to kind of talk and explain what I'm doing as I do it. What I want to do is position the tractor to where the machine itself, our power unit, will stay on a constant plane. So I'm gonna drive up through the road here and I'm paying attention to when the front pitches up or pitches down and those areas are gonna be the ones that I have to make adjustments to. So we're backing up now. I don't want to have my box blade too far that way because it's going to carry material too far over the, at that point. So I'm going to adjust this to where it doesn't necessarily bite in. And I'm going to go kind of fast. And I can float that box blade as I need to. See it dropping that material in that spot? We're traveling on a fairly even plane here. I'm gonna tilt that box blade. I'm gonna taper this in now, going this direction. You'll see me lift that blade up right before I get to the end. And that allows it to taper that material out. Now we can 
gonna just do this. I'm gonna drop the blade until I just hear it skimming the ground. I'm not too worried about cutting the ground too much. I just wanna keep it even, even and smooth. Anytime I feel that tractor pitch kind of hard, I know I need to lift up and reset. <coughs> now what I'm doing is I'm going back to that high spot where I start and I'm cutting about an inch off each time. Once I bite in, I lift up just a little, just to take the pressure off of that blade. And by pressure, I mean the weight of the blade itself. And I'm watching and listening for my cues. See, this side's good and even. We've got just a little bit of dip right there at the start. So to pull material back this way, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some and I'm gonna lift up slowly to deposit material. <coughs> Excuse me. to deposit material as we go forward. And it's okay if we start letting material get close to the bank over there now, since we're getting close to being done. flip around and cut the other side to grade. Now this side I'm going to do as I would normally do. <coughs> so you guys can see how fast you'll get at this. And as you get more practice, you can cut a little bit more at a time. One time. <laughs> One pass and we're on grade. But the main thing is that you guys learn these fundamentals, put them into practice, and you will become proficient at fixing your place. Let's go get us another load, shall we? I also use the truck for two things. One is compacting the road, but also checking the grade. Now see as you See how it's tilting to the right quite a bit? That lets me know that since my tire's in the center of the road and on this side, the whole road's tilting. You can feel it really good in a dump truck. I don't know how well you guys can see it, but once we get off of the new road bond, you'll see the truck level out. See how level we are now? But because this road, part of the road has washed stone on it, it doesn't have puddling because that loose stone displaces any water. I always advise people to top coat with three quarter if it's a pretty level road. You don't want to use it on a steep slope because you'll spin out and it won't stay put. But on flat ground, washed stone is where it's at. This is shaping up very nicely. I've just got to stretch out some material between here 
and that culvert right at my rear tires I don't want this to spread out as much as the others so I'm just going to tighten up one length both sides and that should set it up So that load tailgated out really well and it did come over, but that is okay because what I'm going to do is use my box blade to grab this material and pull it back up through here onto this area. And I'm just gonna make this new ditch line a smooth fall from up there all the way to the ditch line so we don't have water sitting like we did before we want it to all drain pretty well down to nothing the end game goal is to not have water sitting on or even near the roadbed itself to get the best result we can let's go ahead and grade this out uh yeah this road's shaping up quite nicely I'm just backing straight up through here right now. And I'm not lifting my box plate up and down. I'm just letting it operate on its own plane. Now what I don't want to do is get into that bank. Hopefully you guys can see okay. Let's see if I can get you out there a little bit more. Hopefully that'll work for y'all to be able to see. Now what I'm going to want to do is actually pull up here to where the ditch isn't full of material and I've got a little bit more to lean. What you're going to see me do is I'm going to back up, but before my tires hit the ditch line and lift me up, I'm going to start pulling material forward. kind of hard not to get that blade into the shoulder too much, but it's all right. I need to slow it down just a hair. That's what we want to do right there. And I'm going to continue pulling this material out. I 
up the road. And I'm trying not to lift the blade up, drop the blade, lift the blade up, drop the blade, because then the road is not going to be a smooth transition all the way. a little bit but it's okay it's not too bad now as I work my way up the road here I start lifting my blade up now to start depositing that material that I'm trying to carry and this is why I like our box blades so much Now another way to look at it, as I back up, you'll notice the tractor lean back toward the level. I can start forward and as soon as the tractor leans to the grade that I want, I start dropping my blade. And then it will contour the road behind me to the same road grade that is in front of me, that the tractor's traveling along. you can see that road shaping up slowly but surely and I'm gonna keep doing this just so you guys can see it done over and over now you can see that center is a lot softer because I'm not able to compact it with the truck so I'm gonna track on it a little bit with the tractor and I make judgment calls as I go as to adjustments that I'm making, where I'm depositing material, and also the feel of the road, how it feels as I'm driving on it. So as soon as that road leans, or the tractor leans, I put the blade down, start cutting that grade again. I leave the box blade down to where it's gathering material. When I get to a spot where it's low, I just start lifting that box blade up. And you can see it deposits that material on the grade that I want. Make sure you guys do this and you know, when you're doing this, have fun with it. Don't get aggravated just because the machine's not doing exactly what you think it should, when it should, because it's only as good as the operator that's running it. I wish I had better camera angles to for you guys to be able to see what this is doing. And don't get in a hurry to make the road what you think it ought to be. It'll get there. It will get cut on the grade that it needs to be. See there, I started cutting a little early, so it's not gaining a lot of material. It's not gathering a lot. Let me get you guys out so you can see what I'm talking about, maybe. The easiest thing to do is visualize this road as you want it to be. And as you do these things over and over again, these driveways, grading projects, you will get to where you visualize what you want the dirt or the road bond to do, and it'll just become second nature. You'll just start forming the ground. See, we've got high ground here. And you can see where I've been dropping and cutting, okay? Right here is your transitional point. And I know the shadows make this hard, but what I'm going to do is back up this time. The grade is proper to here, but then it's rough and it's not on grade, but that right through there is. So you back the tractor up until the contact of the tire, of the, the rear tire of the tractor gets to right here. 
Well, you've got about two feet, three feet back is where that cutting edge is gonna drop down. You drop it down to roughly the level that that is. Then drop it just a hair more. That's gonna cut this down. It's gonna cut it on grade and any extra material is gonna gather up into that box blade. And what we're using as a visual reference is this area over here where you can see the silting. You know that that ditch line is low. It's not draining. So at this point, I would just lift pressure off of that box blade a little bit because the tractor is gonna continue along that plane. You can see where my tread is. It's gonna continue along that plane, but by lifting that box blade a little bit, you open a gap between the cutting edge let me show you i wish i had to had somebody to explain it this way to me you open a gap between here and the, the ground and that gap allows material to start rolling out of the box blade and filling these low spots off to the side and that material will slide over and it will fill that ditch line up just as pretty as you please so let's keep doing this. I'm going to just keep rolling film here or re recording so you guys can see this repetitious process. Let's see if I can get y'all. Because this side over here is what you need to really be watching. All of it is important, but. Another thing, once you start getting it cutting, you don't have to adjust the tilt of the box blade forward to back. You'll just leave that the same. Now I can back all the way up here so you guys can see we're already on a little bit of a plank, so I'm gonna taper this end. Now I'm gonna just ease forward here. I'm flat right now. Now the machine just tilted. So I'm gonna grab some material here. I'm watching and I'm listening. See that material? Right there. You can see it just slowly rolling out wider and wider. You don't have to open up a gap, too much of a gap, when you're cutting it. The higher you lift this up and raise that little gap up, the faster it's going to deposit that material. And a lot of that is just going to be you guys learning this stuff. See, that corner's not wanting to cut. So I've got to adjust my box blade now. I've got to adjust it to where this side over here pitches up, and it will mean that this side, when I let the box blade down, more of this side is going to cut in and cut that ditch. Cut that noisy tractor off for a minute. One day, I will have a hydraulic here. This is how I adjust the tilt. I ran out of adjustment for the way that i'm facing now so i back this out farther and you can see that i'm able to drop this side much more and now i've got a slope on this i just got to turn the tractor around and i'll have to push material back and pull this ditch as best i can but while i'm at it here i'll show you guys how i taper these edges out I'm on a pretty aggressive pitch right here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna idle backwards. I'm gonna put my draft control down so it puts pressure on the ground. And I'm just floating that blade along and I'm just gonna follow it out. Let that material fall out. Didn't even have to lift the blade yet. Now lift. I'm gonna show you what it just cut. 
And you can see how it cut that over there. What I can do now is back up. I've got my blade up. And I'm just barely going to touch this lip over here. And what that's doing is knocking that high lip off. And that side's now on great. I'm just going to lightly drag this along to kind of help exaggerate that grade. All right. Now see, we're already on grade. And since the tractor's leaning with this side pitch down, it's going to cut that pitch farther if we keep cutting. So we don't want to do that. This right through here is exactly what I want. So let's get turned around here. We'll run back down to the very end and cut that ditch in. Just cruising up through here. All of that's on grade. I'm gonna get up here to where it's not on grade. I'm gonna start cutting it in backwards. But the tractor has to be flat. I can see there's a little lip there. I'm just gonna back up. And I'm just gonna taper that down a little. I say I'm not lifting the blade up because the ground drops in front of where that box blade is right now. It's the same principle. You're still cutting a little bit at a time, but you're just tapering it out. See, now what I want to do is I'm focusing on that back cutting edge. Now I'm going to start cutting and gathering material here. how well you guys can really see right now. The goal is to get that ditch line to where it has fall right now. All the way down. So let's try to follow this out. I'm not even worried about what it's cutting in the middle. I'm just worried about this side over here right now. Taper it out, go back forward. Without having somebody to stand here and roll film for me, it's really hard to get this in angles that you guys can benefit the most from. I'm listening right now, I just want to barely hear crunching so I can carry that material on out. See, the crunching stops, so I know I've dropped all the material. See how that's shaping up now? Shaping up quite nicely. Now again, once I get on grade, or the tractor sitting on grade, I'll just drop this down until I can hear it lightly collecting material. As I get closer to those low spots, I start lifting up and depositing all that material. See how I can just barely hear that? I'm just gonna carry this grade all the way out. I see as long as I'm not adjusting that box blade up and down, up and down, I leave it the same, your grade is going to be the same. All right, let me get this thing shut off. I'll show you what we did. If you guys are watching this video as you do a driveway job, you're doing good. Even if you're just making a mess of it, you're doing good because you're learning. You're watching the machine, you're feeling it, you're watching the box blade collect material. And even though it's not doing what you want it to, you're remembering what you did and the result of what happened. So you can see here, tractor's sitting flat, but you can now see that I'm on a flat spot, that that is the grade that it's cutting. It's very slight. You don't want a whole lot of grade or your gravel will wash into a ditch line. If we go put this tractor 
on that grade right now, the tractor's gonna go along that grade, but this box blade is now gonna cut it deeper. That's not what we want at all. What we want now is to inspect our grade. Just look at it and see what we think water would do right now. Personally, I think it would probably puddle right here a little bit because of this. But as you can see, we've got the grade roughly what we want now. It's falling to the inside, it's falling to the outside. Water's not gonna sit on this road bed, but I still don't want it to sit in the ditch. So the tracks that you see here is the tracks that the tractor I'm gonna follow. That box blade is wider than my tractor. And this is why I got a box blade that's wider than my tractor. So I can sit on the grade that I've cut and then I've got about a foot of box blade sticking out past the tires and that's my work area. Now that we've got a grade cut here, that's our work area. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna adjust that turnbuckle to make this box blade sit level with the tractor. And then that way, as I run these tires on this side down the center of that road, the right side is gonna go along the same even plane. And any extra material that it gathers, it's gonna push over into those low spots and we'll have a nice smooth transition. Same thing on this side. We'll put the tires here and there. Since the box blade is gonna be on the same plane as the tractor, we can cut both grades going in the same direction. One more little tip before we do this final cut. You have an imagination. I know you do, you've had one since you were a child. So it's time to bring the child back out and use that. Along this edge, there's an imaginary line that starts from there and it goes all the way to that culvert. But that line you have to imagine being in a straight line and it has to fall in elevation from sky to ground, fall from there to there. If you need to, this is where you see people pulling strings, literally. You put a stake in right here and you pull the stake, the next stake to the culvert. You put a string level on it. And as long as when that end is down, that bubble is more this way than that, you know you have fall. You can leave that string there and you just, it, you know, a visual reference on that box blade. Depending on how high you've got the string off the ground, you want that box blade cutting ground, but the same spot on that sideboard or your lift arm, something visual, you want to keep it on the plane of that string. So you lift up and down and keep that same point at the same spot on that string. That string will help you get even closer to grade. Eventually you'll be able to do this from the seat of your pants as they call it. That's where it, that saying comes from is you're sitting in the machine, it's rigid. This sucker does not have shocks. It is rigid. The back tires are attached to that frame rigidly. It does not give. So if you feel your body wobbling, you can use that to your advantage. I talked enough. Let's uh, cut some grade. Now, this uphill side has got to be pickier than the other side because any water that runs off that way goes off the mountain. It's no longer a concern, but water on this side, that is our concern. So let's get over here on grade. Yep. Oh yeah, that's nice. Real nice. Let me adjust my mirror so I can see what I'm doing. straight line now you see that that won't work I've got to readjust that just a little bit 
<laughs> there's so many variables guys so many variables now this fox blade i don't want what i do want is for it to skim right along this edge the bottom of the ditch line now the way this is positioned right now you can tell there's a lot of room here and a lot of room over there if i drop this box blade right now it's going to cut that crown right off and all that extra material is going to go out size of guess what we're going to have a flat road after all this work we've put in one pass could ruin every bit of it not to worry you so what i've got to do now readjust that turnbuckle as tight as i can get it and hopefully we can get on grade a little bit better here actually now that feels good so what i'm going to do slow it down and what i'm going to do is make it to where that blade that's curved that way does not dig in but this blade right here pushing backwards is going to manipulate this road to that grade that i was wanting graph control down now one thing i want you guys to watch here is notice how consistent this road is See how there's not any ups and downs, so to speak. So I'm just gonna start dropping this blade down until I hear it barely touch. Just like that. And I'm gonna use that top link to just do my fine adjustments. And I'm just gonna let this thing idle along. Cut our final grade once this now that this tractor is sitting on the grade we want so let this thing pull along i got pulled over just a little bit too close to the bank and you're gonna have to make these adjustments on the fly once you start doing this yourself. And that's why I'm not cutting those little adjustments out. It's not mistakes. You have to react to everything your machine is doing all the while you're doing this. See it bite it in real quick right there. It's cutting deeper because the road is not perfectly straight. So let's pull this up. Now let's cut our grade backwards just a little. And I'm just wanting to hear crunching, almost like just the sand. You don't want to hear gravel getting rubbed around. See, at times I'm actually seeing daylight between that blade. And what I'm doing right now is I'm watching that gap between that front cutting edge and the ground. And what I want to see is no changes. I want it to stay the same. That's our ideal situation right now is for it to stay the same. So it's actually getting a little bit more of a gap right there, but now there it goes. Let's just go ahead and cut this little section right here good see it dropped that material because the front of the tractor dropped and that means it dropped in elevation so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to where I was at drop it down just a little bit wait until the tractor gets fall on it go ahead and bite back in now I'm going to pull this material uphill now right here is a low spot you'll see me lift and that material fall out. And that, my friends, is how you cut that grade. Lastly, but not leastly, I'm gonna back up. I'm watching that blade again for changes in elevation. As long as it doesn't change, the next step will be lift the draft control lever so this blade just floats, and I wanna tilt this back. About like that. You just don't want that front 
blade to touch, but you want to get it as close to touching as you can without it actually cutting material. And that will give you the smoothest possible grade. And there's nothing wrong with using your three-point hoist controls to make minor adjustments. If you carry just a little bit of material, that's fine. But my goal now is to leave it smooth the whole width across as best we can. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's cut this other side down now. This side does not have to be as particular, but it's always good to try to do both sides as best you can in order to learn. Just a little bit of a drop right there. So what I've got to do is you'll see me working back and forth. See me carry that material and deposit it. There was too much of a drop right there. So when I jerked up on the controls, it deposited that material, but the material as I was moving forward, it also squished out to the sides to fill that low spot. Now we're gonna go back, grab some more, and we're gonna do the same procedure again. We just wanna gather a little bit of material. The faster you go, the better it'll spread. See how it drops? And then you fill that spot in just a touch more. And just keep doing this. Do not get in a hurry when you're learning. You'll learn faster if you don't. Doing this stuff is the most fun I've ever had. Anybody can learn this. I'm just collecting material where it's not needed and dropping it where it is. Now I'm just gonna try to cut my grade all the way. Tilt your box blade back. Now see, I'm gonna use that little pile of material that's in the box blade right now I'm going to try to maintain that same amount of material. I don't want to drop, I don't want to pick up. Let's do us another grab of it. Now you can see from here to here is about three, four feet, but I didn't touch over there, so that side's a drop off. What I'm going to do is adjust my position on the road to get that tractor to the grade that I want. Now I'm going to drive straight up the road. All right, everybody. I believe this video is long enough. We're going to end it here. Be sure to like and comment below. Comment the word value if you feel like this video helped you or helped somebody else. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing and ding the bell so you get the notifications. I'm going to try to share what little bit of knowledge I have on light excavation and grading to help you new folks get into the business, whether you want it to be a full-time gig or a side job. On the next video, we are going to be top coating that section we did in this video with a beautiful three quarter washed stone. And I'm also going to be grading on around the back side of the house to make the driveway a consistent transition through the curve. And we'll also be top coating it with a three quarter gravel. I'll also be covering that we're putting a new drainage pipe in and how to avoid crushing it during the process of building the driveway but also to build it to where future traffic will not crush that same pipe thanks for joining me guys we love you and we will see you on the next video